There are a lot of free-to-play FPS games on the market, but not all of them are up to scratch. Most of them are really bad, but when one does come along that actually plays well, it usually stands out. And this one caught my attention and held it. What we're looking at here is a game called Ironsight, and it released into open beta in February. I think it's pretty good, so let's take a look at it then. What is it? Well, Ironsight is a free-to-play competitive shooter that is currently in open beta. It's not available on Steam though, so if you want it, you're going to have to head over to their website and download the client. No other platforms needed though, it's just a solo.exe, if you still remember when those existed for games. The game is set in the near future, 2025 to be exact and it's based around the battle over natural resources between private military corporations. This means that you will see a mixture of futuristic weapons and scopes, as well as weapons that you're used to from modern day shooters such as the AK. You have four game modes that you can choose from. TDM is the first offering and it's probably the best mode to jump into just to learn the weapon mechanics and map layouts. And then you have Secure Point, which is a bit like Headquarters in Call of Duty, so both teams need to fight over randomly chosen points. And then you've got Resource Takeover, which is a bit different, and there you're going to be fighting over an objective, but this time each team needs to take out robot sentinels and metal reapers to collect their resources. And last up, we've got Search and Destroy. This is an attack defend mode, and you'll be familiar with it if you ever played S&D in COD or Counter-Strike. It's also the main mode for the ranked competitive play, but you've got to be ranked 10 before you can get stuck into it. S&D is probably my favourite mode just because it offers up something that I'm familiar with, but still has that tension you have when you're on your own against multiple players. It offers that excitement value. Now the game does have kill streaks, but they aren't as annoying as some of the ones that I've experienced in COD before, at least in the amount of time that I've played. They felt that they were hard enough to obtain that they worked okay. They also seemed to last for a much shorter period of time compared to some of those in COD that feel like they last for an eternity. And the entire killstreak system is based around drones and you have to pick if you want defensive or offensive options. And then you can choose from a number of options such as a UAV recon drone as a defensive option all the way up to the metal reaper as an offensive option which is a huge drone that you get to take control of. I think it scales pretty well though so if you want to get the small kill streaks, they will of course be easier to get or you can pin your hopes on the bigger ones and hope that you reach them. The graphics, the visuals, well they look pretty clean, it's not next level visuals but it's a free to play game and I think that when you take that into consideration the game looks pretty decent. It's running on their own engine too which is quite unusual, an engine called the Iron Engine so unlike most free to play games that will utilise other engines like Unity or Unreal, Einsight's actually got its own engine to fall back on. It helps too because the performance of the game is really good, over 100 frames per second for me at 1440p and as well as that the simple things that you could want in a game like being able to choose between toggle or hold aim down the sight, crouch and sprint too. It sounds simple but a lot of free to play games forget the basics. There's also a vsync option, a frame rate limiter and an FPS counter as well as the option to change your sniper sensitivity separately to your base one. All welcome features and some AAA games don't even have all of these. Now with this being a free to play game you know that somewhere there's going to be microtransactions or MTX. After all developers want to make money from the game. The question is though, are you able to pay money in this game to get ahead and put yourself at an advantage over someone who's simply playing for free? Well in my short time with the game so far I don't think that's the case. There are some cosmetic items that are definitely harder to reach if you don't want to spend money. But for the most part I was earning plenty of in-game credits after a few games to start buying decent weapons. You can also buy weapons with in-game currency for a limited time, like a day if you just want to try them out. Certain attachments for weapons also require you to be a certain level with that weapon or for instance if you buy a new weapon like the FAMAS you're going to need to level it up to a pretty high rank before you can start to put attachments on it like a compensator for example. There are quite a lot of weapon attachments in here that you can unlock just by using the weapons from sites like the Hollow or the ACOG to more futuristic display sites and barrel attachments. I personally didn't get any feeling that I would need to spend any money on this game in order to compete. I think the amount of XP that you get from playing each game, especially if you're doing well, is more than enough to let you get the weapons that you want and perhaps some cosmetics on the side. 
That being said, if you do want to spend money on cosmetic items, the option is open to you, and there is actually some nice cosmetic stuff on offer. What's cool about the weapon cosmetics, though, is that some of them have new reload animations as well. So if buying cosmetic items is your thing, then there's plenty here to get stuck into, but they aren't going to give you an in-game advantage, and I think that's the most important thing. I think with the rise of Fortnite and all the custom emotes, animations as cosmetic options rather than just skins is going to be a big thing in the gaming industry going forward. Now there are a lot of weapons in this game and each weapon has a ton of attachments and cosmetics available for it. Then you're able to gain a lot of character cosmetics on top of that. If you want to unlock everything it's going to take you an awful long time but I think that's a good thing. Players want a deep unlock system where they've got to work to get the things that they want. So the gameplay then. How does it feel? What's the gunplay like? Why did this game catch my attention? Well, I have to say that for a free to play game, it feels pretty triple A. The automatic rifles are easy to control when it comes to recoil, although the recoil does become more noticeable the deeper you get into your magazine. Headshots are also a really big deal. SMGs feel really nice when hit firing up close. And if you're all about those quick scopes, then you definitely enjoy the snipers because they feel very similar to the COD snipers that spawned so many quick scope montages. In fact, this game reminds me a lot of the older COD games like COD 4 and Modern Warfare 2 and 3. Before a game, you can customize three different loadouts, pick your main weapon, which you can then have three attachments on, as well as a secondary weapon such as a pistol, shotgun, or even an EMP rocket launcher. And then you get your three kill streaks from either the defensive or offensive options. Of course, you can pick grenades too. You get one lethal grenade, such as a frag or a sticky, and then one tactical like a stun or a flashbang. You can pick a melee weapon too. Last of all, you can choose three class skills. A lot of these will be very familiar to you if you've ever played COD. Quick aim, quick reload, marathon, nimble hands, they all give you some sort of benefit such as faster aim down the sight, reload or longer sprint time. And as I mentioned just now, it's very obvious that this is copying a lot of what made Call of Duty great back in the day. I'm sure some of you have been watching and thinking that too. Honestly, it's impossible not to make that comparison. Einsight has got an old school Call of Duty feel to it and I can only assume that that's by design and very on purpose. The fast movement, the relatively low recoil and killstreaks all fit in with what we associate with classic Call of Duty, even down to the class skills. I will say this though, the time to kill in this game feels a lot higher unless you're getting headshots which I think is very important. So I think there is a bit more skill involved there and being compared to the classic COD games is not a bad thing in my opinion, it's a compliment and honestly it handles itself very well this game. For the most part free to play games feel like absolute knockoffs and ripoffs. I know that may sound unfair in certain circumstances but they typically tend to have a much smaller team and budget so it usually ends up that way. That being said Iron Sight doesn't feel like that at all, it feels very polished. In my opinion the game is not without its problems though, let's talk about the netcode. I know that term is somewhat overused these days, but it's still the easiest way to describe the online performance, even if it's a pretty broad term. In my time playing I did notice some pretty wonky hit registration and also some occasions where I was killed behind cover. I'd also like to see a ping notification on the scoreboard rather than just a console style signal bar. There's some odd mouse movement at times, possibly down to mouse acceleration. And one of the things that the game doesn't have right now is raw input. So that could be something that they could look into adding. Overall, I have to say that I'm pretty impressed with Ironsight and right now, it's only in beta and with it being free to play, if they continue down the same path and tune up the netcode, I can see it being a really popular game. It's quite interesting really, I've been downloading and playing a lot of free to play shooters recently just to get a feel of where that system is going and how good or bad free to play shooters are in 2018. But ultimately I think and I hope that with the polish and popularity of a game like Fortnite we're going to see way more free shooters available to play and also one would hope a much higher level of quality. And I wouldn't be surprised if the big developers like Activision, EA and Ubisoft start developing into that idea now. We shall see. The next free to play shooter that I'm going to be checking out though is a game called Black Squad, kind of an alternative to CS. And that video will be up very, very soon.
And that's all for today, folks. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you didn't, a dislike. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one.